What's going on everybody? Rob here, Trev2323, TREV2323. Subscribe, like, and share. Today I'm going to review, it's about a year old, maybe a year and a half old, the SLAC electric gate opener. People have been asking me, is it still working? Is it still working? Now I had Acorns Fence Company out of Hammond, Indiana put in this nice big sliding gate for us. Uh, what happens in the city of Chicago, there's so much congestive parking, so much congestive parking in the city of Chicago. Ages back, I put a double gate to, uh, you know, right here in this area to open my backyard. And uh, in the wintertime, it still got so inconvenient. So we also did put an extra carport in here. Now the carport cost us $800 on sale. And you see it houses the car back here. But the double gate, since my wife likes to park under the carport and I got all my tools in the garage, what it does is I bought her this Orange A remote. Actually, only one button works. And now you, you can do it from the inside also. And the sliding gate opens. Now that is a 12 foot wide gate. It's a 12 foot wide gate. I installed this myself. And there's videos up there, Trev2323 SLEC 600, I think, sliding gate opener. And it's a 12 foot opening for the gate. But my review is on the sliding gate opener because people are asking me if it's still working after a year. It's pretty cool because if I'm inside, I could open it up. They do give you two remotes. I really should buy one more to program it so we can leave it the house. These, this, these, this is how I did my magnetic because it has magnetic things to stop it. I gotta put some paint over that. I hate seeing any rust right there. Any rust right there. I've seen a little rust spot right there. Okay, but these are the magnetic stops and that's how I fabricated them to the fence because you do need to find where your magnetic stops are. So there's just some washers on the back of a two by four and that's how it stops it. You see that one's a little bit close because there's a little bit of uh, grease line in there. Then you let it go. And then here comes the other one all the way back here. And one has to be a little bit higher and one has to be a little bit lower than the other one in order to stop it. Now there's a strong magnet switch inside of here that those connect on and they toggle it to start and stop it now this is the closest i got it but still that's close enough for government standards once this thing is closed there's no open it because it's locked into place it's locked into place with the motor itself because there's gears and there's keys underneath it three of them that it loops around to lock it in place all right I, I do recommend, now I skimped out, I didn't go by the concrete pad they recommended, but if you see, let me see, you see the concrete pad just moved just a tad bit. Well, it took a while for me to keep wetting it and stomping it, wetting it and stomping it, so the ground actually grabbed hold of it. So I skimped, it should have been a bigger concrete piece in the ground, so I did skimp on the concrete piece. But with the, uh, so, so if you do, if, one time only one time so far knock on wood this wood that it didn't open for my wife is because it started getting chilly in here and against one of our wall in our 110 year, year old house there's no radiator so i put an electric baseboard heater in well when she went to click this with that baseboard heater it blew the circuit and we didn't know what happened all we knew is the gate wouldn't open so she was like rushing oh no I told her where the key is and I told her let me show you how to open it all you do is you turn this key and you open this 90 degrees and once this is open 90 degrees it opens that you can slide the gate back and forth okay now what I normally do with this chain is I spray uh, lubricating gel WD-40 on the chain and in the gears I do put a lubricating WD-40 maybe four times a year and also with the gate itself, this is a galvanized gate, but we are in the Chicago weather, so it does start to get some surface rust. So if you see, I actually went ahead and I put, uh, it's a gel, it's a rust remover gel. I scrubbed it in there really good in all the corners where I seen the rust forming, the rust removing gel. And then I bought galvanizing paint. So I redid all the corners on this with 
rust remover and galvanizer and I will continue to do that every year or every time I see rust forming on this gate because if not that's when you're gonna have the problems that's when your gates gonna kind of start falling apart now everything seemed like it adhered really good except right here but I'm not gonna crack that off right now because hope if I ever get a break in the weather I'll redo it before the end of the season now I seen there was a rust spot right here so I might put some the gel WD-40 on that right now and since these were a little bit close see they're touching I put the gel WD-40 on here because it does constantly rub against that every time we open and close now with the distance on this you see I did all this to galvanize I, I rust proofed it and galvanized it but I'm going to put some more gel on that now actually when we're driving into the alley we're driving into the alley you can hit the button and that's a 20 foot fence that is moving there you go right there and then it stops it on its own with the magnet with the magnets that it comes with i bought it from orange a i know i bought it off of i think it was an ebay and orange a it shipped pretty fast and i mean it it is more than worth it now with the sliding gate itself you see how low those wheels are to the ground if we have a bad snowstorm i do come dig out those wheels that i do i, I mean i do maintain the gate itself i do maintain the sliding gate opener the sl 600 ac and i too do maintain the gate itself but either way that's my review a year later a year and a half later on this sl 600 ac and as we're talking right now i'm gonna go grab some wd-40 from the basement and put it on the chain thanks for watching bye bye